Welcome everyone to Digital Learning Units Drop Everything and Learn. That happens every third Thursday of the month. This month in January, we are going to be sharing with you about Canva.com. Um, for those of you that might not be familiar with it, I put a link in the chat so that you can check that out. Today, our information and expertise is going to be shared to you coming from Rainbow Bagsby, who is our digital learning unit specialist. She's also the executive director of ARCSD. In addition to that, Emily Powell Carpenter, who was a digital learning unit specialist with us and just recently moved over to communications and tech outreach through DESI, and we're really excited for this opportunity um, that Emily has. In addition to that, she is chair of the tech committee um, with the Junior League of Little Rock. And the reason that I mentioned these outside organizations that they're a part of is not only do they use Canva, within our organization, but they also use it to support the organizations that they support outside of what they do in their regular job. So I wanted to bring that in to that. Today, they're going to be sharing with you how they utilize Canva, both the tools and features. And so I hope that you get a lot out of this as you join us today. So I'm going to hand it over to our facilitators. And if you have questions, please put those in the chat as we move along. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kirsten. Okay, so getting started, this is going to be a little bit different than a regular presentation. It's going to be more of a demo, right, showing you how the software works. But the first thing that I wanted to show you is that this was actually not in like a regular PowerPoint or Google Slides presentation. This was actually inside of Canva already. So did you know that Canva has a presentation mode? So if you are looking to make a slideshow of some kind that's a little bit cuter or fancier, or has more features than normal, you might wanna look to Canva for that. Um, and if you choose the presentation mode when you're creating it, you can present straight from inside of Canva with the present button. So. That's pretty neat. I haven't used that much before, but I'm using it today. Um, also, just want you to think about straight from the beginning that one of the biggest things about Canva is that there's a lot of templates involved. So not only does it have a lot of great features that you can edit yourself, but it comes with a lot of things already built in so you don't have to start from scratch. So this is, you can see the template that I based our first slide off of. I didn't have to come up with all of this. It makes it a lot quicker and easier. Um, depending if you have a free account or a pro account or um, through uh, Canva for Education has a lot of the pro features as well, um, will depend on how many elements you get. So just don't ever feel bad about using the templates, no matter what your skill level is. I am have an art degree from college, um, major in graphic design. So I feel like sometimes I should be able to make this. I can make it from scratch, but when the purpose is you know, to do it quickly to save you time, then just don't worry about the templates. So today we're going to talk about how to start from scratch in Canva, how to change the size, um, colors and fonts, kind of the basics, show you how to use templates and elements, which are like the little pieces the templates are made up of, how to upload your own media from your computer, a few just quick guidelines about design in general, how to save and share what you've made, and then give you some recommendations for a few more things that you can explore on your own. So when you're gonna start from scratch, you're gonna wanna go to the, hand, the Canva homepage. So like as soon as you go to canva.com and you're signed in, you'll be at the homepage. So I'll show you what that looks like. And you're gonna have a couple of options for how you wanna start. So I usually go over here to this purple create a design button. And you can choose um, if you want to do a custom size, if you want to start with a photo or import a file. But the cool thing about Create a Design is that Canva has built in a lot of different sizes already. So if you want a presentation, you can search for that. So different sizes. And depending on what you pick, you'll have different features from within Canva. So if I pick presentation, I'll get that present button. If I picked um, Facebook, maybe you say I want to make a Facebook post that button will be like share to Facebook. So there's a lot of integrations in there too. And then you don't have to spend a lot of time looking up like what size is a Twitter post? What size is the like cover for my form? So that saves a lot of time. But you can also just start from a custom size and type in the height and the width 
or if you know you want a custom size, there's another button over here and start with the height and the width. So like a lot of times I just start, if I just wanna play around, I usually do 500 by 500, click create and you'll come up. It'll look the same as it was before, but it'll just be totally blank and you're starting from scratch. So that's what we're gonna talk about. How did you start from scratch? If you started and you realize that you don't want to have a 500 by 500 canvas, little artboard in your project, if you have the pro feature, you can resize. So you can either resize um, like a copy or you can resize right within your document you're working on. So let's say I didn't want this to be the presentation size. Let's say I wanted this to be Facebook post size. You can choose that and click resize. You can see it leaves everything I already had on the page. It moves it around a little bit so things aren't cut off. You might want to adjust it. But if you change your mind, you want to go back up here next to resize, there's an undo button where you can do control Z, command Z to redo. So that's really great. It's easy to do. If you can't resize, you'll have to start with a new artboard, a new file, but you can copy and paste all of your elements over. And then you'll see as you're working up next to undo and redo, it automatically saves your changes, kind of like working in a Google Doc. So as you go, you don't have to worry about that. So the first thing you might want to do after you start from scratch is change your background color. If you have some text on there, you're going to want to know how to change those colors. So we'll talk about colors next. If you click on anything, you can kind of see as I'm hovering over the different pieces, they get that light blue outline. So that shows you what you're about to click on. Once I've actually clicked on the background up here on this top bar, I'll have a background color option where I can click and change the color. You'll have a lot of different options to select from if there's other colors in your file. If you have a team or a brand guide set up, you'll have all the options that you've already kind of saved in your account, or you'll have the option to choose from default colors. You can also search colors. You can search um, by hex code if you know how to look for that. You might get suggestions for different color palettes. There's a lot of different ways to choose your own colors. Since I'm usually making things for a certain project, I'm usually gonna go with colors from like our logo or colors we've used in other projects. So for this, so we have colors in our brand guide. Um, I'll change those um, to match the digital learning unit colors. I also found recently you can go to canva.com slash colors and you can explore in there. You can make different color palettes, see how things look together, um, get suggestions. You can also get inspiration from looking at templates. If you see something that you like how those colors work together, you can use those. And then we'll talk about how to check the contrast and accessibility of your colors because that's something that's really important as well. So I'm going to change the background of our page to our dark blue from our brand kit. And I'll change the text to a lighter blue. And then in addition to being able to change the background and the text, you can also change the elements in Canva, most of them. So I'm going to click on our little cat here. And I'm actually able, you have more choices. I have five different parts of the cat I can change. So I'll go ahead and just make him like a little white cat. So even if there's elements, little illustrations or pictures in Canva that you wanna use, but they don't really match, you can usually edit the colors and it's always gonna be up here in this kind of top left section of your menu. So when it comes to talking about the contrast and the accessibility. If this is hard to read, that's because the contrast is not where it should be. I'm really guilty of this though. I really like using white on yellow, um, but it stresses people out. It's hard for people to read. And even if I don't agree, I can be a little bit more objective. This is actually a link. You can add links to your stuff in Canva. So you can see when I click on it up here, there's a little link. So we're gonna go to this page. This is just one place that you can check for accessibility. But if the text is white and, and the background is yellow, yeah. We have a question in chat. Did you create the branding guide for the digital learning unit? Yeah, so once we decided 
what we wanted our guide to be, we were able to set that up inside of Canva because we have a team and then everybody on our team can see the guide together. So I can show you what that looks like as well. Um, so it shows the contrast ratio is low and it fails. So that one does not work. And I have to think about that sometimes. Um, another one that would not work, which I don't know why people love to do this, but this is kind of like my pet peeve is like red on blue or blue on red. I'm sure you guys have seen this in a design before, but it also does not pass the contrast um, checker, even though it seems like it should. It's darker colors, it's not like two light colors, but they're really too similar to each other to pass. So you can search online for contrast checking. There's a lot of different resources for that. You can also kind of adjust this to see how much you'd have to change your colors before it would pass. Um, you can also search for like colorblind checkers, different things like that. So lots to think about with color. You also probably want to add some text. So if you're starting out and you want to add some text from scratch, there's nothing on your page. You're going to come look over here on this black menu on the side. So these are Canva calls in the tabs. So you have a templates tab, elements, uploads, and then text. So let's add some new text to this page. I'm going to click add a heading. So this is another part that's already in our brand guide. These are kind of the defaults. It doesn't matter which one you pick because you can always change it once it's on the page. So I'm going to add a heading and then make it say typography. But I don't want it in the middle of the page, right? You can't read it. So again, when you hover, you get the little outline. You can click and it's got the box on the outside. Then you can drag it around. I'm going to move this down. You can kind of see, I hope, the like pinkish purple outline right there is the margin. I use that a lot to um, kind of get everything lined up. And then I'll put typography over here. Maybe that's where I like it. Um, so now everything's moved around, but it's still pretty plain, right? Like I didn't do anything to change it. Um, maybe I want this to be bigger. There's different ways you can change the size. So up here at this top menu, this you're always gonna have this kind of menu when you're selecting text. You can change the font, the size. Kind of those things you're used to bold italic underline so you can change it using the plus and minus you can change it by clicking and selecting a size you can change it by clicking and typing in a size or you can change it by clicking one of these corners and dragging it out and you're able to see um, like the black box i'm pointing as if you can see it but kind of to the right of my cursor you can see the pixels width and height of it or in the top menu you can see the font size changing so you can drag that until it's where you want it but i want mine to actually stay at 100 put it back so different ways to change the size and then to change the font you select your text and you're going to go up here right now it's this din ot font but i want it to be anonymous pro that matches the template i'm using so you can search if you know exactly what you're looking for it gives you kind of some suggestions i know i search a lot for like handwriting canva has a lot of fonts included there's a lot of them are free but some of them are under the pro um, but i wanted like the typewriter kind of font it's called anonymous but you can just see there's a lot of different options and it changes over here so now it kind of matches that um first page from the template. Um, and then font effects. So we can make this heading a little bit fancier. You can change the spacing. You can change, um, here's the effects. So there's all these built-in effects. Kind of have like a shadow, lift off the page, outline. This one's new, actually the background kind of looks like your social media posts. My favorite for whatever reason is the splice option. And it gives you an extra option for color. So up here is the color of the outline. And then down here is the color of the little shadow. I can change that. I can change all of my text to be uppercase. And I also want to do this little spacing. Maybe I want to space the letters out. They're kind of close together. You can drag or type it in. Uh, OK, so this is another cool trick. If your text is too long and it wraps you can double click on this little bar right here and it'll snap to be the size of your text so you don't have to like drag it out and try and guess 
I didn't realize that until recently I did it on accident and it worked. So that was really good. So those are kind of the basic text effects, but one of the fun things you might play with um, in the text tab is Canva has these like font combinations. They look like they're graphics, but they're really just different fonts using the font effects. So I'll just pick this sparkle one. Um, you can change it to say whatever you want and you can still customize it. So this is really just a regular font, moon time. It has the effect on it of neon and then it has the color of yellow, but I'm gonna change it to be our little light blue color. I'm gonna resize it. So kind of using all the text skills we've learned, drag it over here. So typography is fun. Um, this kind of breaks the last rule of sticking to one or two fonts or families, but this is kind of more of a graphic part. Um, the font families just means that like we, use I use on a lot of stuff this DIN OT option it's one of our brand fonts and it comes with all of these different fonts in the family so you've got italic you've got white and bold and so you can kind of mix those up to give it a little bit more variety without having to use a bunch of different fonts so that may be something to look at in your designs as well okay templates so this is one of the most fun parts of Canva templates. When you click over here on the tab templates, it's going to show you a bunch of options based on your current page size. So we're in a presentation, so it's showing a bunch of presentation templates, but you can always resize a template or you can use elements from other templates. So you can search through here. I'm going to search for colorful. And here's that example um, template that I started using. So there's 26 pages in here. There's a lot of different options. If you wanna add one, you'll just click on it. Gives you the option to replace or add a new page. So you can add the new pages in to your presentation or to your whatever you're working on and then edit it from there to match your brand. So I actually, cheated and I had one already set up for templates so you can see kind of the difference between what it would look like for ours it matches but I didn't have to start from scratch so you can use the templates tab as one way to get templates but you can also um, search when you start from scratch on the home page you can search templates by like size or style or just you can search for whatever you want so like searched recently for chalkboard. There's a lot of teacher things. If you search for school or bus or supplies, there's lots of elements and templates that are school related. So I could come in here and maybe I really like this template, like the design of it, but I don't need a poster, right? Maybe I need like a, a slide for my, for my class. I could resize this. I could copy and paste pieces of it. I could just check out what fonts they use and use that in your design. So you don't just have to use the templates exactly as they are. You can use them for inspiration a lot too. So here's another page from that marketing template and I already changed the colors, but I wanna show next how to add elements. So elements is probably one of the things that you could play with the most and just kind of search around and get lost in here. But there's, um, different shapes and lines. You can use like boxes, backgrounds, but there's also photos, um, little illustrations like stickers, and it's the same. You know, there's a lot of free options, but there's more options for the paid or education kind of <laughs> pro accounts. So I searched for cats to go with our little cat theme. I'm gonna pick this little cat picture and I'm just gonna click and drag it over and you'll see that I can drag it straight into the place where the photo already was. So it just replaced it. I didn't have to turn it or resize it, delete the old one. And you'll also notice that it turned it black and white, even though the picture was in color. So it kind of kept all that pieces from the template. If I select the picture and go to edit image up here, you can see that the saturation is turned all the way down. So that's how much color is in it and it kept that setting from before. So let's get another cut to go in our other picture. So cute. And let's look for like an illustration. Here's one at the top. So I get this little cat paw. 
come straight in the middle. I can drag the corners to resize it. We've practiced that. I can click at the top and change the color. I can move it around wherever I want. Put it over here, it's kind of too big. But you can also, besides using the elements tab, let's say you'd already had a design in the past that you liked and you want to copy and paste it. This isn't the easiest way to get something really, I'd probably just search for fish in the elements tab, but I wanna show you that you can copy and paste across browser windows. So if you had like two designs open, one you'd already worked on and one that's new, you could come over to your other design. You could select and you can either like right click, copy or control command C and copy. So I'm copying that fish and I'm coming back over to our original page. I'm gonna paste. No. Well, it really wants me to use control V. And then here's my fish. So it copied straight over. I can change the colors again. And then you can also copy by holding down the alt key. I'm not sure what it is on a Mac. So hold down alt and then click and drag and it's just gonna duplicate on your screen. So that's another really quick shortcut that I use a lot. You can do that with text or with elements. So that's pretty handy. Maybe you've already gotten your text, the size and the font that you want. You want to put some more on the page. You don't have to start from the beginning. You can make a copy. So that's the main parts about elements. The other part I wanted to show is that if you really like a design element, when you're selecting it, you can come up here and there's a little info and it shows you the different things about it. You can see what it's tagged as, and you can see who the designer was. A lot of them are this marketplace designers, but some of them are specific. So you can click to see more, or you can click to see more fish. You can click to see um, just similar things. Like if I like this little cartoon fish, you can see more canvas stickers, or I could have turned to see more retro. So there's a lot of ways to explore the elements. So it can happen with that on your own time. Okay, uploading media. Um, this part's pretty easy. You've probably uploaded a file before, shared a file before. So you're gonna come back over to this black menu on the side, uploads, and then you're gonna choose a file either from stuff you've previously uploaded or from your computer. So I've already uploaded these pictures. Here's me just clicking and dragging it. Um, but since it replaced the photo, my head's kind of cut off because it wasn't a square. So if you want to fix that, you can double click on the picture and then you can see that you can adjust where it's lined up in the frame. We can do that again for rainbow, drag her over here, double click, adjust where you want it to go. And then if you don't have the picture already, you'll go to upload. Depending on your computer, you'll get the different types of upload options and then I'm going to pick this is my cat and then when it's uploading you get a little progress kind of like watermark and a little bar and when it's done it'll disappear and you can go drag your new picture over so everything that you've uploaded into Canva is going to save on your account until you delete it so all of that will be in your uploads and once you get a lot, you may want to search. So like, say I'm looking for a logo I put in here. I can search for that um, depending on the names of stuff. So uploading media is really probably one of the easier things to do. Okay. All right. So we're getting close. I just wanted to show a few kind of final tips and tricks um, to make this image look better. There's not really anything super wrong with it. You can read everything, right? It matches our brand, but it's not necessarily a good composition. So we're going to duplicate this page. There's a few different ways you can duplicate. If you're looking at Canva with this like bottom menu on, you can duplicate by clicking this tiny, tiny menu and going to duplicate. This menu is actually kind of newer for a long time. Canva looked I'm going to close and hide these pages. It looked like this, where it was like a scroll and you could go through all of the pages like this. This is how I usually work on it, but it's harder to, uh, you know, scroll through everything than just go back and forth. So when you're looking at it in this different view, you can name the pages, see it a little bit easier. You can rearrange them and you can duplicate like this. 
we'll open this back up and then to rearrange in the bottom it's just click and drag you can kind of realign stuff so there's some tips about kind of moving the things you can also um click to add a new page at any time or in the other view there's a new page button so one of the things that i want to show you is under the file menu you have the option to show some rulers you have the option to show guides and you have the option to show the margin all the time so the margin shows up when you're dragging stuff it can kind of like it'll highlight and snap to the margin but if you want to see it all the time you've got to turn it on in that file menu the guides are used by if you click inside the ruler click and drag you can make some lines onto your page some guidelines to match up with different elements when you want to take it off you can just click and drag them off of your board so play around with that um, sometimes you don't really have to use that or sometimes it's not helping my trick is i just kind of like squint <laughs> or look at it from far away right if you've seen artists like hold up their work and squint at it kind of helps you see it without reading the stuff so much um you don't want to get your composition too crowded so all of our stuff is kind of close together overlapping so i'm going to get these pieces over here on the side the i clicked and dragged to like select all three at once and maybe i'll move these over here a little bit kind of more out of the way let me drag the blue part too and maybe of course i want to line these up a little bit differently and i'm going to drag the bottom one you can see as i'm going it gives maybe you can't see it's pretty small but there's a little dotted pink line that lets me know it's lined up with the top but now it's underneath the squiggle so i can click on the text and then right click i can move it to the front i can move it to the back i'm going to bring it to the front but maybe i decided that i don't even really like the squiggle that much at all i can just delete it I know you guys have been watching the little squiggles animate this whole time um this text is really close to the edge it's all crowded i'll bring this over here and line it up and then the last thing this is like a pet peeve of mine but it's one of those tricks that you know really lets people know if you were paying attention to the design or not when there's one little word hanging off at the bottom it's the orphan so you can click and resize this box until it looks how you want it's a little bit better so now i'm going to turn off my margin i'm going to kind of squint and see if it looks how i want it to look i might move this down a little bit more kind of center it so you can play around with it but just really thinking about how things are lined up not having too much on the page and especially if you're making something that you want to print like if you're making a poster or something you want to print out for your classroom don't put things too close to the edge because unless you have a really really expensive printer it can't get that far to the edge right it's going to cut off so this i got this is the one i did for practice so on this one i'd made the top a little bit bigger right that's another trick whatever you want people to read first should stand out the most make it the biggest you know whatever's the second biggest people are going to look at next so if all of your text on your design is the same size people aren't really going to know where they want to look so keep that in mind as well when you're done it's time to share or to download so there's a couple of ways to share up here at the top right there's a share button if you're in a team you can decide whether you want your team to be able to edit view it or not see it at all so i have it turned on to where my team can edit this or you can copy a link so i really like to use this feature copy a link to view so you're working on a design and you want someone else to preview it review it approve it whatever you can send them this view link and it's gonna let them see it but they don't have to be signed into canva they don't have to be um, you know in the editor and then they can just preview and click through all of your designs so that is pretty helpful but then if you're ready to download it it doesn't say download it just has the icon the arrow pointing down you can choose what kind of file type you want most everything i make either download as a png if it's a graphic um, it's a higher quality image it's better for if you have a lot of text on the page or as a pdf if i want to print or if i'm sharing it posters things like that so you can choose how you want to save it 
Um, if you have the pro in the education, you can do a transparent background. Just make sure that you select the pages that you want. If you ever select more than one page, it's going to download it as a zip file instead of just individual pictures. So I usually double click to unselect everything. Go pick the one that I want. Sharing and downloading. Done. And then I'm going to download it. It does warn you that like there's animations in here and that won't show up in the picture, but that's totally fine. So there you go that is downloaded so we went through a lot of stuff not everything here's a few more things that you might want to look at after you've kind of played around a little bit um you can share edit your content into folders um one of the complaints about canvas it's kind of hard to organize sometimes so you probably do want to set up folders as you go or think about how you name things so that they're easier to find when you first go to your home page everything's just kind of like just out there and it's in order of how what was the most recently edited so keep that in mind before you start there are a lot more photo and video editing features that we didn't look at so i just showed you can make it black and white basically but there's a lot of different filters that they add all the time um, there's a graph maker in canva now the last time i tried to make a graph in canva i literally just like drew the boxes to make the bars and tried to make them the right so but there is a graph maker a chart maker so you might try that if you're doing any kind of data or if you want your kids to make charts um math class things like that you can set up a team and have the brand guidelines i'll click that right at the end because someone asked about it you can download canva to your desktop it works basically exactly the same but if you're someone who keeps a lot of tabs open and you don't want to accidentally close your canva you just want to be kind of out of your browser you can download it and then of course um, you can go to canva.com education to apply for your education accounts and those can be for students as well so let me just show real quick what the brand kit looks like, and then we'll be ready to wrap it up. So we have a team and we're pros, so we have a brand kit and inside of it, you can upload certain logos and then everybody has access to it. So that makes it way easier to do it. Also keeps people from like squashing it or resizing it or using the one with the white background, <laughs> all of those different things. Um, you can set up different colors. I like that you can set up multiple different colors, so that kind of helps. And then you can set up your default kind of fonts, but you can also upload fonts. So if you use a font that's not in Canva and you have the brand kit, you can upload it. So that's shared for everyone across your team. Okay, so that was it. We're right at 12.01. Here's my contact info, and we will, of course, be sending this out, and then I'll let Kirsten wrap it up. Thank you so much, Emily and Rainbow, for keeping track of the chat today. Um, we hope that this was very beneficial to you. We will be putting this as a recording on our new website that is housed on the DESE website under Research and Technology Division. So you can find our recordings there. I put that link in the chat for you. I also wanted to tell you about an opportunity for further learning. Um, if you are uh, in the area, the Central Arkansas area, ARCC is having their um, yearly uh, conference on February 19th, and you can find more information in the link that I have there where you can learn more about things just like what, what we learned today. In addition to that uh, conference, I want to let you know about our next deal days, which is on the third Thursday in February, February 17th at 1130. And again, Emily will be helping with that as well as Robin Finley. And we're going to be focusing on social media and tips and tricks to support you with social media. I also wanted to let you guys know about Digital Learning Day that is coming up February 22nd, 2022. If you haven't planned already and you're on a campus, you might want to have everybody wear tutus for the 222 Tuesday. Um, in any case, we are going to be posting all that week um, from the hashtag, hashtag DL day. Um, you can follow us on 
joining us now on Facebook and Twitter, but we will be posting some things about Digital Learning Day all that week. And then that actual Tuesday, February 26, 2022, we will be launching our podcast for the Digital Learning Unit entitled um, Living in Beta Mode. Uh, so we'd love for you to subscribe once we start that out. But please join us next time, February 17th, and then um, we have that information there. If you're interested in following us on social media, I'm going to put those links in the chat as well. We'd love for you to follow us. Um, we uh, share out other information about other divisions and schools across the state, as well as what's going on in the Digital Learning Unit and uh, articles and information that might support you with Digital Learning Day. We appreciate you guys so much. Um, we hope you have a good rest of the week. Please stay warm in this bitter cold and we'll see you soon. Take care.